Test tubes. One of the most basic yet most important things an innkeeper relies on to succeed with queens, young colonies, and even mature colonies if something goes wrong. Not exactly sure who started test tubes first. Maybe there's uh, research that could be done into it, but if I could tell you one thing, test tubes, how to make them and use them properly, are very important to succeeding in ant keeping. You see, test tubes are the main water supply that probably over 70% of all ant keepers use, not only to keep their colony in while they're growing young, but when they're mature enough to move into a nest, test tubes are also a great way to allow them to have water supply and something that they already know, they're familiar with, and they won't have a hard time figuring it out or getting stuck in it like a puddle of water would do. But how do you make a test tube? Test tubes in general have a lot of ways to mess up while you're beginning ant keeping. Uh, one of the biggest problems is having bubbles in your water supply. Now the fundamentals of a test tube is you put water in and you push a cotton down into it. At this point it creates a suction effect like a vacuum. If the cotton is loose enough It'll be dragged down as the water is either drank, evaporated, uh, etc. And eventually, if you do it right, your cotton will end up at the bottom of the test tube, which means there's no water left and eventually it will dry up. But putting too much or too little cotton can have negative effects and consequences can begin to unfold. As we've probably known, common knowledge, even before thinking about keeping ants, there are many different sizes of cotton balls. They're used for makeup and, uh, makeup, uh, I guess that's uh, all I'm thinking about, makeup. There's other reasons too though. Cotton balls are used for other stuff. But in the world of ant keeping, it's crucial that you use cotton because not too many other materials can do what cotton does in a test tube. Now this is a smaller cotton. I've found that these work perfect for the 16 millimeter, 17 millimeter. Uh, I might go a size up if you're going 18 millimeter plus uh, width, but um, these are the size that a lot of hand keepers are using and they're the ones that I depend on, mainly when I make my test tubes. If you have bigger cotton balls, and you try to use the whole thing um, when, when you make your water set up, this is when the bubbles appear because the cotton is too thick to have that suction effect to pull it down. So what ends up happening is instead of the cotton moving with the water, a water bubble appears. And that means not only is the suction broke, but you have to manually push on the cotton to bring water back into the test tube for your ants. So let's go ahead and make a test tube quick and explain a little bit deeper how this is done. Test tubes come in a lot of shapes, sizes, and uh, they all have the same method involved, but depending on the size of test tube that you have, you want to make sure that you have a decent sized cotton fit for it, not too much and not too little. You want to go ahead and put water 50% to 75%, depending on if you have a colony or a lone queen. You take your cotton, which these are the smaller version, I like to not only push down but twist them in a little bit. This makes sure that the cotton's not loose because if it's loose what can happen is the ants can actually get their jaws stuck to it, it can wrap around the ant's body and get the ants stuck to it, or uh, the, the worst case scenario that I've seen is that the brood can get stuck to it and if they get tangled up enough it, it can kill the brood. Uh, it happens sometimes, but there are ways to avoid it as well. You could take the back of a paintbrush, a poker, pretty much any kind of long skinny object. In this case, I have a special tool I use, but it's all the same. And you want to quickly push it into the water. 
you want to try to push it in just enough where there's a tiny bit of um, damp cotton, but not over damp. Now let's watch this. If you push it in too far, it'll flood very quickly, very quickly. And the flooding is no good. It drowns uh, queens and new ants, and it, it turns into a lot of problems. There are different sized cotton balls, and depending on the size of your test tube, you want to find the one that correctly fits kind of like that perfect slot of the puzzle. Using a larger cotton on a regular sized test tube could cause it to have um, a lot of issues dragging down with the suction and it'll eventually cause bubbles. On the flip side, having too little cotton can cause a flood. And that's just uh, something you want to avoid altogether. So, to make the proper test tube correctly, you want to add 50 to 75% of the test tube in water. These are smaller cottons that I found at a local supermarket. And instead of ripping these in half every time, uh, these are the perfect size. You want to put it in, make sure that the cotton does not touch the water before you're ready to push it in. Twist it in. I have it like that. Then you can take a long skinny object like a paintbrush and you want to quickly push it into the water and slide it down. Now you don't want to push it too far in because the cotton will flood and you don't want to push it not far enough in because the top cotton will be dry. You want to make sure you push it in where it's damp, right where the ants are going to have contact to it. If you push it too far in, you'll flood it immediately and you will probably have to either redo it or you could take a paper towel take some tweezers go in and kind of suck up all the excess moisture now then let's fill this back up you want to push it in quickly because the test tube uh, water does a weird thing when you push it in slow if you don't push it in quick enough, the cotton will absorb the water before you get it where you want it to be. And it starts to create this bubble of air. Now this bubble of air shows us that there is no suction going on in here anymore. The water will continue to drain, but because there's not that suction, because there's air in there, the cotton won't move with it. Which, when you're starting out, is important to realize, but there are ways around it as well. Say your ants are already in this test tube and a bubble occurs. You can go ahead with a long skinny object and gently push on the cotton until the water is sucked back into it. And you might have to do this once, maybe twice uh, every week or two, just to make sure your ants have water. Using test tubes to raise your queen and young colonies has found to be very beneficial for a lot of ant keepers over the years. There are other methods found, but test tubes are the way that most ant keepers find the success in early, even all the way to an expert. There's really not too many other methods I would recommend personally other than a test tube. Ants need that small enclosed area. Uh, it would make us feel claustrophobic, but indeed, ants love it because they feel safe, secure, and it really does mimic a queen's chamber in the wild. Uh, for instance, Campanatus, they chew a small chamber, probably the size of a quarter if you stretched it out to an oval, and that's what they live in until the first workers hatch and start gnawing and chewing all the tunnels that you would probably see in a log if you've ever split one open or was cutting firewood, etc. Test tubes are very important, and knowing how to make them is also just as important because if you add too much cotton or too little cotton, you're going to have a bad time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or I left something out that you want to know about, leave it down in the comments, and I hope you guys have a wonderful night. Peace.